Hey guys, this is an Orca tutorial and here I want to talk about two energy um, calculation errors that you can get uh, that are both related to basis sets. The first thing that I want to talk about is the basis set superposition error. Uh, which uh, is described uh, in short in uh, the ORCA user manual in section 8.1.6 or in most uh, ComCam textbooks. So what happens here uh, in short is that uh, when you go to calculate the interaction energy of your dimer or more than two molecules, what happens is that um, you get this artificially lower energy than what is supposed to be due to the mixing of basis set functions of the two uh, molecules that you have. So to calculate the uh, interac interaction energy you would take the energy of your dimer minus the sum of the energies of the monomers uh, and uh, sometimes you will get this um, value lower than what it's supposed to be because of this mixing of uh, basis set functions. So one way of going about uh, correcting this is using this counterpoise um, uh, correction that I will describe now. Uh, I think that the easiest way is not graphic but actually going through the, every step of the input creation so I think I will just dive right into it and hope that you will follow. Uh, you probably will understand better once you read the description in the ORCA user manual. So please do that before listening to me here. Um, the first thing that you need to do is actually to optimize uh, your uh, water molecule um, my molecules uh, as a dimer right here and save uh, the coordinates of the optimized dimer uh, in basically keep them close to you because you will need to copy paste them in the input for the uh, BSSC uh, input. So the first three jobs are pretty much um, what you would do if you were to compute the energy of interaction of these two molecules uh, with no correction. So the first job is literally the first um, water molecule and the second job is the other water molecule and the third job is the dimer. So here thanks to um, pay attention to is the fact that the first three jobs you were actually going to be optimizing things and that you should be using exactly the same level of theory. You also need to add this XYZ file uh, keyword in order to print an additional file for the program to use for subsequent calculations. Now each of your job uh, need um, an ID and a base name so I keep them uh, the ID and the base the same for each job but the names of the job cannot be repeated so um, I call them monomer 1 and monomer 2 just because I copy paste this header from other calculations to make it easier for myself so now that we have created the uh, first three simple uh, jobs. Um, we are ready to dive into the um, four more um, calculations that we need to do in order to get all the values that we need for the calculation of the BSSE. All right, so uh, here we will calculate the um, energy of the monomer as if it is in the dimer. So here you need to copy paste uh, the uh, coordinates corresponding to the atoms of one water molecule and the other one that you obtain from the um, optimized dimer geometry here. Okay, and notice that there's no more opt keyword in these uh, job descriptions because here we're doing a single point and no more an optimization. Okay. Now that you've done this for each separate molecule, the last part is creating two um, 
calculations where you actually have both uh, molecules from your dimer in the same calculation but in each case one or the other is masked so you uh, transform the um, one of the two water molecules into this ghost uh, molecule by um, adding this colon uh, after the the name of the atom so in the first calculation here I uh, mask the second water molecule and in the second uh, one I mask the first water molecule what this does is that it will replace the atoms by a point in space but keep the basis set uh, intact so this allows you to um, get the geometry of the uh, dimer using the basis set of the dimer but for only one of the water molecules okay so if you run this calculation and scroll all the way to the bottom of your output you will see this table uh, where you have all of your jobs listed and all of the energies that correspond to them uh, to make it kind of more uh, visual, I copy pasted these values into an Excel table uh, and it looks like this. So um, the first thing that we need to get in order to calculate the corrected uh, interaction energy is to get the non-corrected interaction energy, which is the dimer uh, energy. Uh, from which you will subtract the sum of the monomers. Okay, here I used the uh, I transformed um, the values for the energies into kcal per mole, and I used uh, uh, 627.5 as the um, conversion factor. Okay. So now that we've done uh, this, now we need to compute the correction values. So the first correction value is actually um, taking the uh, geometry of the monomers in the dimer but with the monomer basis set. So this would be these two that you sum up. And the other correction would be uh, taking uh, the last two jobs, basically where you use uh, only uh, you use a dimer, but look only at one of the two molecules by uh, masking the other one. Okay, and then to get the actual corrected interaction energy, you would take the uh, value of the uh, non-corrected interaction from which you would subtract the other two correction factors. So here we get um, over 1 kcal difference for the corrected uh, interaction energy versus the non-corrected one. So in this case, um, the BSSC is actually uh, tangible. But this is not the case for all calculations. For example, I have here two methane molecules and for them the uh, interaction is low and the correction brings practically nothing. So, you know, it's not always necessary to go through this um, correction thing. Um, maybe read more on it in instead of doing it I and mean, if you have a very large system maybe it's not worth it and read more on the cases where you actually have it and if you have a small system and you don't mind setting up a calculation then might as well just run it to uh, clear up your mind okay so that was part one and now we're gonna dive into part two which deals with a very common practice of using different sizes basis sets for, um, uh, let's say, calculating the energy of activation or um, uh, things like that, where you have a large um, molecule um, or molecules uh, for which you want to avoid calculating uh, the Hessian and uh, doing the vibrational analysis using a larger basis set because this will take forever. So instead of that, what a lot of people do is that they optimize um, 
their molecules with a smaller basis set and they do the vibrational analysis with this smaller basis set which I will refer to as basis set 1 and then they uh, compute the energy uh, of the using just a single point so no optimization with a larger basis set which we will call basis set 2 um, and then to that value they add the corrections uh, from the thermal uh, chemistry values um, from basis at one uh, and um, use those corrected values for their um, for their analysis so now I want to show you how it's done and first in the, for most important disclaimer is that the basis sets that you use have to be very similar they have to be from the same family and they can't be too far apart here I'm using uh, def2 SVP as basis set 1 and def2 TZVP as basis set 2 but you should make sure that what you're using is not too far apart otherwise um, the values of for that you're gonna trying to use as correction will not give you any good correction so be careful with that all right so example here the first thing I did is that I did a full um, analysis so optimization and vibrational analysis using uh, of my water dimer using uh, DEF2 SVP. Now, of course, two water molecules doesn't take forever to compute with most basis sets, so it's fine. But the point is here uh, to illustrate an example. Um, but keep in mind that this is done for big molecules with a lot of atoms. Okay, so what happens here is that I need to get the uh, Gibbs free energy which is the value that you obtain nope, here. Uh, when you scroll the, all the way to the bottom of your calculation and then here it says Gibbs free enthalpy da -da -da -da, and I copy this energy into my Excel table now I will want to use the entropy correction from this smaller basis set and I will use this as the correction factor for my larger basis set so I will copy paste this value in my Excel table over here now this is not the only thing that I need to use I will also need to get some thermal correction which is like the zero point energy uh, value and uh, other stuff which is what I obtain if I keep on scrolling up pum, 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 and get to the total correction over here which is worth a good 34 uh, kcal per mole so you cannot forget about it it's right here so I will copy this value over here in my Excel table. Now the next thing I will do is I will run a single point calculation using a larger basis set, so TZVP. And I will take the energy that I obtained from that. Here you scroll the way to the bottom of your calculation and then bam, the final single point energy. So this is the value that I will be using from my larger basis set which is this. Now if I want to get the corrected value I would be using the sum of all of these things. So we get the uh, enthalpy from a larger basis set and the vibrational energy and the thermal correction from the smaller basis set. Okay. So now just to demonstrate uh, that I am not crazy and I'm not telling you uh, completely wrong things I recalculated the same thing using um, the large basis set that we used over here TZVP and this is the value that you obtain um, from the uh, for the uh, free um, 
energy using the large basis set. And this is the uh, difference between the what you obtained using the large basis set in all uh, goodwill and this is the corrected value. So I get a 1.6 kcal per mole air, which is negligible for most applications, I would say, unless you are doing some very picky things. All right, so um, I hope that it was clear. If not, leave comments below the video and I'll try to answer um, as much as I can. Uh, if not, then I will see you next time.